can't start my day without coffee. And it's not just me. In the year between 2020 and 2021, an estimated 9 billion kgs of coffee was consumed. And I don't have to say it, but that's a lot of coffee. And the most recognized brand of coffee in the world, Starbucks. As of 2021, there are approximately 34,000 Starbucks stores in the world. And at any given time, there are tens of thousands of Starbucks being consumed by people around the world. No other brand has stamped its authority and recognition in the coffee space the way the Green Siren has. But what if I tell you that your favorite coffee brand doesn't technically function as a coffee shop? And all the hype and hoopla about their coffee is all hogwash. I'm going to let the realization strike you like a hot hit of early morning caffeine that Starbucks is really, really just a bank. Wait a minute. Before we get brewing, tap that subscribe button for more shocking revelations and case studies. Starbucks started in 1971 and their initial push was to sell coffee beans and nothing else. A real connoisseur's paradise, Starbucks's carefully selected beans established them as a reliable fix for the common man's coffee needs. It was only much later, after the entry of Howard Schultz into the company, that they pivoted to selling those Wendy coffees you see so many people sipping on. They shifted from being a coffee bean company to a bona fide coffee shop ready to take over the world. And they did. On a side note, Starbucks's growth was so aggressive that some economists coined the term the Frappuccino effect, which meant that the real estate prices of localities automatically shot up once a Starbucks outlet opened nearby. Having a Starbucks open near your house was basically like winning the lottery. All this also led to rather grande problems. Not only was the company cannibalizing its own market share by oversaturating itself in the market, but there were rumblings that the company was cutting too many corners in order to keep their profit margins fat. The principles that Howard Schultz had tried implementing a few decades earlier were being thrown out of the window in the favour of easy profits. But if the history of Starbucks points to anything, it's that the company is way smarter than that. But what's that got to do with banks? After appointing its first ever CTO, Starbucks concocted an elegant plan to keep the customers coming for more while also simultaneously keeping their wallets filled to the brim. And the plan is simpler than you might think. Loyalty cards. The loyalty card is not unique to Starbucks. Numerous brands offer the opportunity to repeat customers to keep repeating themselves by offering them goodies and discounts via loyalty programs to keep them coming back for more. But when it's one of those creamy cappuccinos at stake, few coffee lovers would miss out on the opportunity. Loyalty cards and programs are a well-known marketing tactic to build long-term customers. The more you consume at a store, the more you're loyal to it, the better the brand treats you. Then it's discounts, gifts, vouchers, special offers galore for whoever is kind enough to buy, buy and buy again. What's so great about Starbucks's model specifically? For starters, Starbucks uses its loyalty program at the helm of its retention strategy and not just as a quick seasonal solution to get noticed. The Starbucks loyalty mobile app today accounts for more than 30% of its sales. According to the publication The Manifest, few things stand out about their loyalty app. Number one, a helpful UI UX. Number two, the app's ability to easily communicate to you how close you are to the nearest Starbucks. And number three, the main point, the ability to preload money into the app. And Starbucks's high quality delivery over the past five decades has built a customer base so ferociously loyal that there is no hesitation for most people to put their money in there. I mean, of course they're going to have their morning cuppa at Starbucks. 
A solid 41% of regular Starbucks customers in the US and Canada store their money in the Starbucks loyalty app. Each time you use the app, you're given a certain number of stars. And the more the stars, the more the rewards. But here's the real kicker. By the end of 2019, Starbucks held a collective balance of $1.5 billion within their loyalty app. For shocking context, more than 3,900 banks have less than $1 billion in their balances according to the FDIC. Now, Starbucks of course doesn't allow customers to use their stored money for anything else other than their coffee. Nor are they allowed to withdraw any of it once put in. But in the meantime, customers unknowingly provide Starbucks with a $1.5 billion loan at 0% interest, which the company of course uses to expand. In fact, it's even better than it looks. The industry has coined the term breakage for the money that remains unused by customers in these loyalty accounts. In the financial year of 2019, Starbucks's breakage income was a whopping $125 million. That's $125 million that exists just as a giveaway given by you, the customer. So the next time you load money into a loyalty app of any brand, know that it's probably being written off as profit for them, regardless of how you intend to use the money or not. Starbucks obviously isn't legally a bank, but all of this gives it the shine of one. The difference of course being that your money in a bank can easily be withdrawn. All of it is a little bit diabolically genius. Or it's just great business strategy. Money and cashable only as benefits. Can you tell us about some unique loyalty plans in the comments? We're even open to horror stories if you have lost any money under these schemes. Let him rip. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.